Yo, what's good, family? Welcome back to another WWE Raw review results, etc. I wanted to wait um, so that I could formulate my thoughts. And this is going to be Raw Cuff because I don't even remember everything that happened on the show. So I'm going to use these photos to kind of guide us through the segments, uh, etc. Now, if there's anything that I missed out down below or if you guys have any predictions or anything like that, drop it in the comments and we'll get straight into it. So first thing we had was Cowboy Lesnar making his way to the ring. You know, he comes out, he's all happy, taking pictures with fans, being all baby faced and whatnot. It was a terrific sight as always. Um, had the kid, he goes up to a young fan. He uh, has him put his hand on the championship. That's That kid's gonna remember that for the rest of his life, you know? Um, it, it was pretty sweet, you know? And then he, uh, he he gets a little cheap pop by saying the town that they were in and everything. I thought it was, it was great, I enjoyed it. Um, of course, Paul Heyman comes out and interrupts him. He tells him, hey, you know, you might not even have your WWE title come WrestleMania because March, excuse me, March 5th at the Garden, if Bobby Lashley gets cleared by concussion protocols, you will have to face him. Now, uh, to step away from the eyes of a fan for a moment and, and go to the, like, the Mark side of things on the internet and whatnot, um, there's rumors right now that Bobby Lashley suffered an arm injury at the Royal Rumble match he had against Lesnar and he's projected to be out approximately about four months whereas that is the case then someone else would have to step up now a lot of people online are like oh it's gonna be Cody Rhodes like blah 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 like um no Cody Rhodes I think he will debut March 14th at Jacksonville uh just call it a hunch but yeah it, there's no way he's gonna debut at a house show uh, and again, in case you guys don't know what a house show is, the house show is a non-televised event. Uh, March 5th at the Garden, they do have Lesnar being uh, scheduled to defend his title. And they do they have done title changes in the past, but uh, I mean, if he does face Rollins and Rollins does wind up beating him and adding himself to the triple threat, that would be pretty sweet. Uh, but the rumor right now is that Kevin Owens is going to face Stone Cold and Seth Rollins is kind of like lost in the shuffle like there's nothing really for him to do so it would only make sense if he gets added to the triple threat if by some miracle they let him beat Lesnar then Lesnar already has his one-way ticket uh, to face Roman Reigns at the main event regardless and then from there you can throw Seth Rollins into the mix because they have unfinished business from the Royal Rumble so it, the story literally writes itself um, does the one-on-one -on -one make a bit more sense uh, I mean, yeah, because Roman last year also had a triple threat. And Daniel Bryan kind of inserted himself into the match. Which, again, I was okay with because all three men had a, a story to tell in that main event. And it made sense. But uh, I'm not going to go too deep into that. If you know, you know. Uh, yes, I think Seth Rollins adding himself to the match would make the most amount of sense. So here's hoping that that happens. Next picture we have against Brock Lesnar. He's literally saying, you know. Um, I'm going to be champion. I'll do what I want. I'll, I already knew that I was going to defend my title March 5th. I didn't need you to tell me that. Uh, and then, of course, we have Street Profits versus Alpha Academy <sighs> again. And same result as last week. You already know the vibes. It was a good match, though, as always. You know, they, they did their thing. You know what I mean? Uh, Chad Gable is stupendous. The kid has gotten so much better, both on the mic, uh, more in the ring. He's already He was already phenomenal in the ring, pun intended, but... Or pun not intended, actually, because that belongs to AJ. But uh, his timing has gotten better. His work, as far as like working the audience, has gotten better. Things like that. So definitely was enjoying that. Uh, as you can see there, Otis goes for the pin. He basically splashes Montez, I believe is how it ended. And Chad basically held Montez's leg so he couldn't kick out. But the argument here is stupid. Montez's leg was under the rope. So there should have been a kick out there regardless. Uh, I don't remember if the referee saw it or not, but... If he did, this is definitely not the way to end the match as Montez's foot was under the rope. So, again, doesn't really make sense. Uh, whatever. Moving on. Tommaso Ciampa and Finn Balor versus the Dirty Dogs, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Really good match here. Uh, this was uh, a really good match aside from the RK Bro versus Seth and KO match. This one did really well. I enjoy it personally. I'm a huge mark for the old school NXT. I loved Tommaso Ciampa and Finn Balor teaming up. 
I would love to see these guys tag team more down the line. Uh, it would be a good way to cement Champa coming into the main roster, especially if he's going to be full-time after Mania. I just think it works. Let me know how you guys feel about that. Then, of course, we saw Finn doing his thing. We had, uh, again, Tommaso was like the one getting beaten down and then Finn with the hot tag. Really good match. I enjoyed it. Again, hope to see more of this down the line. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Really good segment. Uh, the opening segment between Brock and Paul, I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10 as well just because it was funny. Uh, but it was a bit repetitive in my opinion as far as what they, like the way that Paul comes out and kind of, I guess the repetition is, is in the sense that you knew what was going to, I guess, happen to a certain degree. I don't exactly know how to explain the repetition portion, but I, I like in my thoughts, I know what I'm trying to articulate, but when I'm recording, I can't actually say it. Or maybe I can, I just don't know how. Moving on. Miz was giving his long-awaited uh, tag team partner reveal tonight. He dropped a few promo, like, little tidbits of, like, he even said the word dashing, which people, you know, hinted at Cody Rhodes back in the day. And then the reveal was actually quite kind of pointless. Dom actually kind of stepped up with Ray. It was like, yo, if you talk about my dad one more time, like, I swear to everything. And Miz was like, yo, what? Yo, what? Uh, and then Logan Paul, turns out he's the tag team partner for uh, Miz. Miz is in another celebrity tag match. A lot of people weren't really too happy about this. But, I mean, Logan has a wrestling background. Uh, so it's only a matter of, like, if he can transition that into sports entertainment. And he is actually pretty, like, he is kind of brawlic, actually. So, like, he's got the height. He's got the stature. You know what I mean? Um, and Dom and Ray are kind of small, so it, it should be an equal match as far as like him not having that experience. I think that Ray can carry, uh, as, and Miz as well. Obviously, Miz has like 15 years of freaking wrestling experience too. So um, he comes in there, he starts literally just whooping on the Mysterios. It was great, good to see. Um, he gives a skull crossing finale to to Ray Mysterio. Then Logan's like, "Oh, I want my turn," and Miz is like, "Oh, you want your turn? Bet." So then Logan delivers a skull crushing finale to Dom, uh, but it didn't look like he was protecting him it looked like he almost like clapped his head into the mat man so i hope he's all right um but yes then we have another repetition match here again the beautiful rhea ripley goes up against nikki ash uh for the fourth time in a row and i'm tired of it i'm tired of these matches they need to fight with something else uh if you guys saw the elimination chamber i didn't post the results of it because uh nobody watches my videos but uh Rhea and Alexa had a small little moment where Rhea was like, no, Alexa was banging on the cage while Rhea was inside of it, or Alexa was banging on the cage as Rhea wasn't, or, or sorry, or Rhea was banging on the cage as Alexa was inside, no, 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 Alexa was banging on the cage as Rhea was inside of it, and the, 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 the like, the, the animosity there, like, I felt it, uh, I would love to see that match, what I would like to see is, uh, maybe have like Rhea and Alexa get added to the title match well I mean I know it doesn't make sense hear me out hear me out but then you know they could essentially get a feud from for each other going from there um, and then if Bianca wins the title uh, from Becky because they do have that long story from SummerSlam then ultimately whoever wins the feud between Rhea and Alexa can face Bianca um, and then just kind of go from there and then the other person could face Becky so it kind of writes itself um, I know it wouldn't really make too much sense. If anything, I would only add Rhea to the match and just make it a triple threat. Um, and then maybe have Alexa do maybe like something else. Because uh, I would like to see Sasha get added to the Ronda and Charlotte match. Um, I think she can save that match from it being complete, a complete and total nightmare. So again, Rhea tosses Nikki Ash, hits her with the Riptide 1-2-3. Now here's a, a match that I didn't think was going to be good at all. Uh, or I didn't even think was going to happen actually is what I meant to say. And Shelton Benjamin comes out and faces Damian Priest. And it was actually a good match. Man, that boy, uh, Shelton Benjamin, was getting the uh, hero's welcome. Because he, he lives like he's from nearby. Uh, from South Carolina, I believe. And the crowd was like cheering him and booing Priest. It was great. Um, and again, I know Priest is kind of like a tweener character. But I, I, I've never heard like those type of deafening boos before towards him. Except for what happened that Survivor Series between him and Nakamura. So ever since then, he hasn't really been booed like that. So it was kind of cool to see the crowd really getting behind Shelton, his hometown, you know, or not his hometown, but like as close as it can be. Uh, again, good match overall. Uh, and then, of course, Finn comes out and declares himself 
uh, the next challenger after Priest said specific things that Finn felt described him. So Finn comes out, he's like, uh, it kind of sounds like you're describing me there, Chief. And Priest is like, okay. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be the next U.S. champ. By the way, shout out to Finn's shirt. It's freaking fire. Um, I kind of want to buy it. Anyways, then we have the Dana Brooke and uh, Reggie segment. He apologizes, pretends to. Ha, ha, ha. Then Dana kisses the crap out of him. Her extensions fall over all over creation. She pins him for the one, two, three, and takes the title back after, like, smooching him for, like, ten minutes. I'm kidding. It wasn't that long. And, of course, your boy Akira Tozawa fell on, <laughs> I mean, on uh, Tamina. <laughs> Dude, I love this. It was great. It was great. Um, of course, Bianca Belair comes out, cuts another cringy promo. Does a lot of all that stuff. I, I, I hate that. I like her as an athlete in the ring. I don't like her character, and I stand by that. I don't care what anyone says because uh, this is, again, my opinions. She's great in the ring. I like her strength. I like her bower. I like the flip she does. I like the way she handles herself in the ring. Um, I don't like her on the mic. I don't like her character. It's cringy. It just, it, it just, I don't like it. Becky comes out. She goes on commentary. Uh, Bianca Belair goes up against Dewdrop. Um, they have a few little tidbits back and forth. Becky says uh, the only reason why Bianca main evented is because Becky did it first. Bianca responds with, well, I did it better. Um, argument was actually kind of valid because I would argue that the match between Bianca and Sasha was better than the triple threat between Becky, Charlotte, and Ronda. Um, and that's that's not a lie. That is just a fact of life. Uh, so, again, Bianca and Sasha really danced well together at the dance um, versus the triple threat of Becky. But, again, we'll have to wait and see. And, of course, Dewdrop and, and Bianca Belair fought again. Really solid match between the two, um, with uh, ultimately Bianca getting the upper hand and winning. This is a really nice freaking photo. I like it. Um, it. It was really nice. There was also a few moments where Becky was saying she was getting hot, so she took off her jacket. Corey gave her some water, started fanning her with papers. It was great. I loved seeing it. Um, I could definitely see Carmella arguing to him about that later, but joking, obviously. Um, but it was great. You know, having Becky on commentary, like it was great. It was funny. I enjoyed it. Edge comes out, cuts a riveting promo. This man, in my opinion, cuts probably the best promos behind Paul Heyman in wrestling today. And again, that is also a fact of life. Um, this man dropped three hints for three different people. He said, "Undeniable to, sorry, undesirable to undeniable," which is Cody Rhodes, uh, what he used to say in AEW. Um, he also dropped "phenomenal," which was AJ Styles. He also said live forever, which was Damian Priest. My guess is Edge thinks highly of those three people. Uh, but ultimately, I know he's going to face AJ just because it would make sense. AJ just re-signed. And if you guys don't know, AJ Styles re-signed a multi-year deal. And it looks like he's going to be a lifer in WWE. I know that upsets a lot of people. They want him to go to AEW. But personally, I'm thinking about it long term. Uh, if he's getting paid $3 million a year, which is what the rumor was, and he's going to have certain travel accommodations being paid for as well by bus. Stay in WWE, bro. Do what's best for your family. I I think it works. I think he can, after he's done wrestling, he can just go and start helping out with NXT talent. The man has a wealth of knowledge. The man has been all over the world. He'd be a huge asset to not only WWE's future as well as uh, behind the scenes. So it just makes sense. Uh, he didn't even want to leave TNA. All he wanted was just more money. And they wouldn't pay him more money. So he went to WWE. They paid him the money he wanted. He stays there. It's as simple as that. He's a very company-oriented man. And I can respect that. Again, Edge goes on a tear. His promo was freaking awesome. Um, I wish I could show it to you, but I don't want to get copyright and get taken down again. Then we had the RK Bro versus Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins match. Again, really good main event from these four men, as always. Um, ultimately, uh, Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens pick up the W. This is a really nice picture as well, man. Dude, whoever takes these photos, you're, I'm giving you your thumbs up. Really good match overall. So what happens is they uh, they hit him with the 1-2 Wombo combo. So KO hits the stunner followed by the stomp on, on Seth. If that's going to be their tag finisher, I'm cool with it. Uh, it was actually really good. I don't know why they showed this first and then this because he hit this first and then went into this. But anyways, really good match from these men. Uh, I give this, this match, honestly... I didn't find anything wrong with it. I enjoyed it. Uh, 10 out of 10. Um, as far as the Damian Priest and Shelton Benjamin match, again, uh, 7 out of 10. Could have been a little longer. Um, the Bianca and Dewdrop match, 
five out of ten wasn't feeling it they already fought each other once before and i feel like the way they ended the match could have been saved for a bigger moment instead of using it three times since december the whole her lifting her up from the top rope now i will say this she's brawling as hell she's strong she picked her up walked a few steps in the ring everybody was like oh but dewdrop helped her lift her up over the shoulders okay but then what do you guys say when she bianca was literally carrying her in the ring for a few steps what do you got to say about that oh yeah, exactly nothing so anyways like i said bianca's an athlete she's a beast i just don't like her character kevin owens seth rollins did what they had to do they also made a proclamation that they may very well be the raw tag team champions and go on to wrestlemania to face the usos for the smackdown titles and unify those titles would you guys like to see that let me know in the comment down below and as always it has been your boy the p1 loso like comment and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, i'll catch you next time